Here we have the Teledyne LaCroix HD4000 series oscilloscope. The oscilloscope has a large 12.1 inch touchscreen, easy to use controls, front panel BNCs and front panel trigger input. It also has USB inputs on the front. If we turn it around, you'll see there's a USB TMC connector on the back. There's also a reference in and auxiliary out on the back. On the side, we have four more USB connectors. We have two network connectors. We also have a standard VGA output, and we also have HDMI output, and we have a DVI output. And I'll quickly show you how the feet work. It's standing flat, or you can have it tilted back for normal bench work. But if you're working on a rack and you have it mounted high, then these feet can be rotated completely, which allows the scope to tilt down for use high up on a rack. I'm now going to power on the scope and do a basic demonstration. I powered on the oscilloscope here. Now this is a Windows 7 64-bit architecture. So if I minimize the scope application, I can see Windows 7 64-bit behind here. Other software can be installed and run in here. You'll also see how fast the update rate is on a very large 12.1 inch screen. It's a touch screen, so I can easily just select part of the waveform and it'll immediately zoom in on that part. This is a 12-bit A2D architecture, so what you'll notice is how very fine the waveform is, very low noise because of the 12-bit architecture. If I have a look at some of the trigger functions, you'll see there's many advanced trigger functions here. So I've got standard slope, I've got width, and as I select one of these, you'll see it adjusts the menu across the screen. If I look at width, it gives me options on the type of width I want to set. If I look at qualified, it gives me tabs to select the different qualified menus to be able to do qualified. If I, I've also got TV trigger, and on TV trigger, I've got many different TV standards that, that I can automatically trigger on. If I come into smart trigger, then I've got runts and glitches and other signal integrity issues. If I trigger on the runt, for instance, so I can select the runt, and then when I do a trigger, when I do a run, what it will do is just trigger whenever there's a run. So we can see it's Im immediately caught the run on the screen. We also have serial trigger down here. So what I'd like to do now is to show you the serial trigger and decode. If I go to the channel menu, I can now come down here to the decoder and I can select many different types of serial buses. I've got I squared C selected here. So what I need to do is select my I squared C signal on my target system. And then I can do auto setup. And it'll automatically set up and capture the I squared C. I need to make sure that channel two is also on to make sure I've got a clock and I have. I've got the clock and I've got the signal. So what I do is get a bit more signal on the screen so I can see a complete I squared C and we'll just get a waveform on the screen here, and then I can turn on the decoding. So I can come into the decoder, I can turn on the decoding, and I can immediately see decoding of my I squared C signal. So I can bring this to the center of the screen, zoom in on it, then I can clearly see the decoding of this I squared C. Now I'm using I squared C here. There's many, many more in here. There's lots of different decoding available here on the scope. So I've got I squared C and CAN and FlexRay, SPI, and many, many more. We can also do triggering. So I can link this to the triggering. So I've got the setup, I can do a search, and I can link to trigger. So if I turn on link to trigger, I can then go into the trigger menu, and I can then do bus-specific triggering. So here I'm looking at the I squared C triggering, but if I was on one of the other buses, I could look at the triggering for that bus. So what I'm going to do now is um, 
Just show you a couple more options here. I've got equals, so I can look for very, very specific events in my bus, and that will be very, very useful for anybody. What I'm now going to do is talk in more detail about the differences between 12-bit and 8-bit scope architecture. So how does the oscilloscope vertical resolution work? Well, it's down to the available quantization levels in the A to D converter. An 8-bit A to D converter will have 256 quantization levels, whereas a 12-bit A to D converter will have 4,096 available steps. The quantization level is determined by 2 to the power of n, where n is the A, A to D converter resolution. So an 8-bit A to D converter has 2 to the power of n, which is 256, whereas the 12-bit has 2 to the power of 12, 4096. And this is where we get 16 times more resolution for a 12-bit oscilloscope. We can see this more clearly at the bottom of the screen, where we can see the light blue trace, which is the real waveform, and the dark blue being the digitized waveform. On the 8-bit side, we can see there's quite a bit of quantization error, whereas on the right-hand side, we can clearly see that the dark blue waveform is closely tracking the light blue waveform. The HD4096 High Definition technology is a combination of high sample rate 12-bit A to D converters, high signal to noise ratio input amplifiers, and a low noise system architecture. So the 16 times more resolution than any other oscilloscope on the market, and there are oscilloscopes in this range, in the HD4096 range, of 200 MHz, 350 MHz, 500 MHz, and 1 GHz. The benefits of the HD converter, the signal to noise ratio, and the low system architecture is much cleaner, crisper waveforms, more signal detail, and precise waveform measurements. Here we can see a screen of an 8 bit captured waveform. If we compare that with a 12 bit, we can see how much cleaner and crisper the waveform is. Here I'm looking at a ramp on an 8-bit oscilloscope and on the 12-bit we can see how the noise decreases and we get the cleaner, crisper waveform. And finally a sine wave. The 12-bit is so much more cleaner with lower noise. The benefits of this are not just in the cleaner, crisper waveforms, but also in the detail that can be seen on a waveform, as we can see here. I've got the 8-bit waveform on the left-hand side, which is a square wave with modulation on it, and I'm zoomed in on a section here, and we're looking at the quantization noise. On the right-hand side, we're looking at the same waveform. Apart from being cleaner and crisper, we can also clearly see the modulation. The result of this is that when there's a voltage, a peak-to-peak -peak voltage measurement made, then it will be far more accurate on the 12-bit oscilloscope. Here we can see that measurement being made. The 8-bit oscilloscope is measuring a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of 996 millivolts, whereas the 12-bit oscilloscope measuring the same waveform is measuring 300 millivolts. So the 12-bit architecture gives much cleaner, crisper waveforms overall and it allows a lot more detail to be seen in the very fine waveforms which are quite often riding on much higher voltages.